Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 5 of Cooking with Bear with Chris. We have a great uh, traditional menu option today. It's a crowd favorite. We are cooking beer battered fish and chips with uh, one of my favorite items, mushy peas. I know some of you are not the biggest fans of your mushy peas, but it's so traditional, you can't do it without. So, get your equipment together, get yourself a can of beer, and uh, join me in the kitchen for Cooking with Beer with Chris. Making this golden, crispy, and delicious fish and chips is so easy, I'll have you all impressing your loved ones on Fish Friday. All you need is some basic household ingredients, a bit of beer, and of course your fish. Once you've got all that together, you'll be going from couch to whitewater fish and chips in no time at all. The can of uh, beer I've chosen for my drinking pleasure today is our Dawn Patrol. Uh, back for its second year in action, it is a tangerine blonde ale. So nice, light, easy drinking, a little bit of fruity backbone to it. Um, it's amazing to uh, drink in the sun on a summer day. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a fan favorite. So looking forward to uh, enjoying this while I'm cooking. Cheers, everyone. Like I say, today we're making beer battered fish and chips. And uh, the first step is to get the chips started. Um, I'm gonna be doing everything, so it's very easy for you guys to replicate at home. Um, you know, we have a lot of commercial equipment here, but uh, the whole point of this is showing you how easy it is to cook some really delicious items with beer in your own kitchen while in isolation. So to get started uh, with the potatoes, um, first thing you want to do is cut them up to an appropriate size. So right here I have my knife and we're just gonna be cutting into sort of centimeter thick chips. You would know these as french fries. Um, for me, they are definitely chips. So, you know, right now we're sort of in these centimeter thick slices. Um, we can then stack them up and cut them into chips. Fantastic. So this is really what we're going for. Okay, awesome. Sit tight while I get the rest done. Um, fun little fact for you, another English term. Um, for the uh, tiny little pieces of uh, chips that you find at the bottom um, of the bin at the chip, uh, fish and chip shop are called scruntlets. Back to the important stuff. Chips are in your bowl here, um, so we are just going to uh, pour in uh, two tablespoons of flour. Try and uh, spread it out over the chips. This will help give them a really nice coating. Um, I'm going to put half in, uh, give them a bit of a mix, and then put the other half in. Perfect. Another mix two tablespoons of sunflower oil as well. This is just to help give the potatoes a really nice um, sort of crispy coating on the outside. So mix those together until your flour and oil is sort of evenly spread throughout the potatoes. Looking good. You want the flour to sort of lose that powdery um, texture and get a little bit more moist. That's right, moist. Don't talk moistly. Chips are fully prepared. We're gonna put them onto our baking tray. Um, you don't want them too close together, so spread them out. You can use two trays if necessary. You don't really want them stacked.
Chips are prepped, into the oven they go. Place your chips into a preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. Don't forget to turn occasionally to ensure even cooking. Now that the chips are in the oven, time to have a sip of Dawn Patrol. I remember actually when we launched this in the pub, um, day one, it turned into a sea of orange in the pub where every glass was filled with uh, with this tangerine blanc. And uh, it was really cool to see, but uh, quickly it became a, a crowd favorite. So I'm um, happy to bring it back for another summer. Uh, Dawn Patrol, the name, just relates to sort of that early morning uh, paddle. Um, so you, you rush in the morning with a group of friends to get out, go for a kayak, a stand up paddle, a surf before uh, going to work. So it's an ode to that moment. But uh, cheers, everyone. And time to uh, start making our batter. So, very simply, we combine it all in um, a bowl and then start mixing. First in goes our flour, our baking powder. This is an optional item, but I like to add some turmeric. Um, provides a nice little flavor boost to your batter, but also um, helps with a, a really nice color to the batter as well. So I like to add some turmeric. And then finally, our beer. This is beer battered fish and chips. So you'll notice so far in my previous episodes, we haven't yet cooked with an IPA. And the reason behind that is because IPAs as I'm sure you know, are very bitter. And bitterness in food is something that you have to be very careful with. And it, it can very quickly overpower the food and make it quite nasty. Um, you know, you wouldn't want to do anything crazy like make um, a, an IPA ice cream. Um, so today I'm using our Astrolab Session IPA. Um, you know, yes, it will add a little bit of bitterness to the batter, but fat is really something that can take it. Uh, it won't be overpowering in the whole meal. Um, and uh, it's a great color as well. You can definitely use darker colored beers, but um, what you have to be prepared for is they will add um, a lot of color to your batter and ultimately make it a lot darker. So Astrolab IPA, uh, we just need 150 mils of this. 150 mils and in. Once the beer's in, you can uh, just mix it together. You want to mix it until it's smooth, but uh, you actually want to be cautious not to overmix uh, your batter. If you overmix it, it can get too heavy, too thick, um, and create a sort of soggy batter. Um, the whole point of using the beer in, in this recipe not only does it add um, great flavor, but the, um, the bubbles actually help create a really nice light batter. So my batter here is smooth, but it's actually looking a bit too thick for my liking. Um, I don't like the batter to be too thick. You want it a little bit thinner. So I'm just gonna add a splash more of our Astrolab IPA just to thin it out a little bit. This isn't a recipe where, you know, if you add a tiny bit too little or a tiny bit too much, it's gonna be catastrophic, but it will sort of have an effect on how crispy and or soggy your batter could be. So, you know, I'm going for a texture that's sort of a little bit looser than pancake batter. So with that in mind, I'm just gonna go for a splash more I will uh, put the uh, adjusted ingredients on the recipe online, and this is looking much better. So if you look here, uh, we've got a nice thin batter for our fish. Now that the batter's done and we're happy with it, we can put it to one side, uh, the chips are in the oven, and uh, we can start preparing our mushy peas. Don't forget to turn your chips occasionally to ensure even cooking. First step with the mushy peas is to get a pot of salted water on the stove. Bring it to a boil before adding the peas. The 
peas are done when the water comes back to a boil. The chips look delicious, golden brown and crispy, so we can put them to one side while we start the fish and finish off the mushy peas. Once you've strained your mushy peas, add your butter, salt and pepper, and mash. Mmm, -mm, mushy peas. The first step is to coat your fish in flour. Today I'm actually using haddock. Um, you could use cod, plaice, um, or any other fish of your choice. Um, it would be great with pickerel. Um, I like to use haddock. I think it adds a really nice flavor and, and works really well. Once your fish is coated in flour and patted dry, you can place it into your batter. And then we go over to the deep fry. I'm really getting a great smell from this batter as I'm mixing the fish in. Uh, I can smell the beer coming out. So it's time to get this in the fryer. Let your batter drip off your fish a little bit before adding it into the fryer. And then I like to hold my fish in just a little bit, just to get it cooking so it doesn't sink to the bottom. When it starts to float, you can lay the rest of your fish in. And you'll see there, it's just floating to the surface. Now I'm obviously using a commercial deep fat fryer, but if you don't have one of those, it's easily done at home. Just add three to four centimeters of oil into a high walled frying pan and follow the same instructions. You can help it cook on both sides by carefully spooning the oil on top of your fish. Spoon out the separated batter so that it doesn't burn and taint your fish. Cooking time is four to five minutes per side, so that means you've got time for another sip of beer. My fish is looking done, so it's time to take it out of the oil and uh, let it drip dry. Look how crispy this is. The color on it's beautiful and uh, holy hops, it smells good. So there we have it, everyone. That was a quick and easy beer battered fish and chips. And uh, I can't wait to tuck in. Um, the Astrolab IPA, I think, will have made a really delicious uh, batter for this. I can already tell it's nice and crispy, so I can't wait. First of all, cheers. And let's tuck in. The color on the batter, I think, is beautiful from the, uh, the turmeric and the lightly colored beer. The batter is nice and light, crispy. Um, the fish flavor still comes through. And uh, overall, that was really easy to make. So uh, I definitely think something you should try at home during isolation. Don't forget to try the mushy peas. Mm-mm, good. And the chips, although they weren't deep fried, they're really crispy, they're cooked all the way through, that coating on the outside um, is delicious and uh, super, super easy. Well, everyone, there you have it. That's episode five of Cooking With Beer with Chris. Um, this was Chris's quick and easy beer battered fish and chips. Give it a try at home. If you don't want to try cooking this at home, our drive through is open seven days a week and you can get beer battered fish and chips through our drive through to eat at home. Thanks again for watching everyone. That was episode five of Cooking with Beer with Chris. We'll see you next time and don't forget to tuck in.